there's an endless supply of people talking about the decline of higher education. One of the things that was most surprising was that if you can get legislators in a room one-on-one -on -one with no media, no microphones, no cameras, and have a thoughtful conversation, they see great value in our institutions of higher education. They believe in these institutions. They're products of these institutions, and they want to see these institutions thrive. When I talk about privatization, I'm not talking about true changing of these entities from being public entities to being private entities. But what I am talking about is the shift over time and the change from public or private to public and private. And truly, if you look at institutions today from Harvard uh, and the most elite of private institutions, they are hybrids as well. The federal government is the third party payer uh, for our students. When I interviewed Teresa Sullivan uh, at UVA and talked about what makes UVA a public institution, she was not talking about the fact that they get 6% of their funding from the state as the driver or that historically it had been an institution that had received funding. She talked about this being in the DNA of the University of Virginia and that it being an institution that was focused on supporting the students of the Commonwealth and the nation and focusing on ideals that were um, really true more broadly in higher education from the get-go, which is for us to have an effective democracy in the United States, we need to have a broad base of education. If you talk to legislators today, democracy is nowhere on the agenda, nowhere on the radar uh, in terms of the importance of education. It generally is focused on uh, how can institutions help with STEM education, how can institutions help with workforce development, getting uh, more of the Commonwealth uh, or whatever state it is, getting more of the citizens educated so that they can quickly move into a job. Uh, that's a very different conversation than you had historically in public higher education. Uh, and particularly at places like William & Mary where liberal arts was really the core of the education, which is a, a, a different proposition than workforce training. What I heard again and again from legislators, governors, and members of Congress is that if we don't figure out how to bend the cost curve and to at least slow the rate of growth of cost, that it's going to be forced upon us. And when you look at things like No Child Left Behind uh, and you look at what that's done in K-12 education, uh, most university administrators, most uh, college faculty would say they don't want something like that imposed on higher education.